Okay, so now that we're experts in series and parallel circuits, uh, we are going to uh, take these two types of circuits and marry them together. Um, so as a quick recap, here are the rules for our series and parallel circuits, and Ohm's law is what connects them together. And so um, one thing that I would recommend while watching this video is um, once I show you the circuit to pause it, write the circuit down, um, I know that I'll be moving um, my paper around a lot um, just to move between work and the chart and the circuit. So it's really nice, it'd be nice for you to have a, a place with your circuit that you can always see it regardless of what I'm doing on the video. So uh, let's get started. Uh, here is our first circuit. Um, as you right away, hopefully you can see that this is not like a normal series or not like a normal parallel circuit. Um, we still see our symbols for batteries and resistors, but instead of being one loop or several loops, we have kind of this combination of both. And that's why we call these combination circuits. The rules for series and parallel still apply, but we are going to have to use them a little bit more carefully in order to solve our circuit. Once again, I have the same chart we've been using with our totals R1, R2, and R3, and V equals IR. Um, we're going to follow the same pattern. And as always, we're going to start with what is given to us. Uh, we know that we've got the total voltage, because um, we understand that that's next to the battery symbol. And we are given our three resistors. And so the first thing, after we fill out our chart with our knowns, we need to look at our circuit to try to figure out what's happening here. Um, so as we leave the battery, uh, we go through resistor 1, and we have to go through resistor 1. Um, and then our circuit takes a turn, and what happens is it becomes a branching point. Um, if you notice, our wire splits in two. I can go one way or the other, and each leads to its own resistance. And then it comes back together on the other side, um, and they branch together again. So what we would say is that R2 and R3 are in parallel with each other. That is in series with R1. So R2 and R3 are in parallel, but in series with R1. So any time you're given all three resistors, the best thing to do first is to find your equivalent resistance. And we're going to use both sets of our equivalent rules here. If R2 and 3 are in parallel with each other, we can find the resistance of 2 and 3 together by following our parallel circuit rule. So we're going to do 1 over 12 ohms plus 1 over 6 ohms. And then once we add that together, we will ensure that we have uh, the take the reciprocal and do 1 over that. So 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6 is 0.25, and then if we take 1 over 0.25, we get 4 ohms. Now this is still not our total resistance. Um, this is the resistance of 2 and 3 together. But we said that R and 2 are in parallel, but they're in series with R1. So another way we could draw this circuit is we'd still have our R1 be 2 ohms, but we could draw our two resistors that are in parallel with each other as one resistor. But this equivalent, and that's why we use 
the term equivalent resistor would be resistor 2, 3. So the combined equivalent of resistor 2 and resistor 3, which we just said was 4 ohms. So 2 and 3 are in series with 1. So we understand that if we're in series, we're going to follow that series rule. We're going to take 2 ohms plus 4 ohms to get a grand total of 6 ohms. And so once we've got our total resistance, we're going to go back to the chart and fill that in. So that's our first known value on this chart. Next, we see that we can do a quick Ohm's law here to get the total current. So we're going to do 18 over 6. We're going to have 3 amps. Okay. So right away, this is where we have to be very careful. It's really um, A lot of students, I find, will see the 18 and they'll see the 3 and they'll right away, they'll start going right with a series rule or right with the parallel rule when that's not necessarily the best thing or the appropriate thing to do. Um, but I do want to say, since we know that R1 is in series with the battery, we can't leave the battery without passing R1, that R1 will have the same current as the battery. Okay. So if our totals are the same here, and we see 3 amps and 2 ohms, we can quickly say, hey, this is 6 volts here. And that follows our series rule and our ohms law here. The next thing, so we've got the first resistor done entirely, but now we need to follow our parallel rules for our R2 and R3. We know that R2 and R3 will have the same voltage, but we know that the currents will be different. However, we do know that these currents need to add up to 3, because we know that there are 3 amps leaving and 3 amps coming in, but what goes into each will be different. However, we also know that our battery starts with 18 volts. So the potential at this point before R1 is 18 volts. After the current passes through R1, we've experienced a voltage drop of 6 volts. So how many volts are left? After we've dropped 6, we should have 12 volts left. Okay. Because this is parallel, those 12 volts will be the same for each. Which means regardless of which one I go through, R2 or R3, I'm going to have another voltage drop of 12 volts. And then look, we can do Ohm's Law again. We see that this is 1 amp here, 12 divided by 12, and 12 over 6 is 2 amps. Oh, and look, 1 plus 2 adds up to 3, and that's exactly what we said. Okay. So that was a quick example for our first combination circuit. Please watch video 2 if you'd like to see another example.